Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I'm back with another video for Neat and Tangled. Today we are going to be using the Holiday Baking Stamps and Dies and then I'm also going to be using the Classic Tag 2 die um, for the card. So I thought it would be kind of fun to switch it up and do something different. I'm actually going to be doing some watercolors. This is a uh, Ranger palette and I am using Daniel Smith watercolors. Using three different sizes of brushes today as well. They're all from the Silver Brush Company. One is a one inch flat brush. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just wetting down all of the paper um, to kind of help the fiber stretch a little bit. And then I'm going to um, just add some moisture to each one of the colors that I have in my palette. Um, I'm using Bristol paper. And so I wasn't really sure how it was going to work. And um, it turns out I didn't love it. So I wet the entire paper again, and then I started going into my colors and laying them down. I started with some purple at the bottom, um, which I'm just generically calling it purple, but I think it is quadacridone purple, deep purple. What are we? Qua yeah, and I can never say that word, so my apologies. Quadacridone purple and then ultramarine blue. I missed that, mixed that blue with a little bit of lunar black for the third color, and then it's just a straight lunar black at the top. For the wet on wet, which is what the background is, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't bad. Um, it did blend. I'm going to go ahead and dry that down. I prefer bolder color, but you can definitely get really, really soft looks with these watercolors if that's what you're into. In order to make them a little bit bolder, I'm going to go in with what we call wet on dry. So my paintbrush is wet, but my paper is dry. And this gives much more intense color, which is just my personal preference. It, I mean, um, there, there isn't a right or a wrong way, just kind of depends on what look you're going for. I'm doing um, a tag with these little holiday bakers and they are baking at night because they're taking after me and my procrastinating and I have to do all of my holiday baking still. Um, it is Christmas Eve. I will be baking Santa's cookies with my son this evening, baking, decorating, all of that fun stuff, um, just because, you know, I ran out of time. So here I didn't really like how the bottom edge was so hard. I'm going in with a little bit of clean, clear water, and then that didn't really blend it out. So then I just picked up a little bit more purple and put that over it. That seemed to work better. I'm flicking on some just clean, clear water to kind of move those pigments around and get some differentiation in the background. And then I decided I was actually going to go in and pick up the colors and splatter those as well. So this is just a couple of different ways to kind of add some interest to the, this is going to be the tag, the, the background's going to be the tag. Um, but just, you know, just I guess to make it a little bit more interesting because everything that I've got going on in the card, like the actual layout of the card is pretty simple. So I'm going to dry that down again. And then if you have been <laughs> watching me in the last couple of months, you know I'm putting Perfect Pearls on everything right now. Um, so this is Perfect Pearls in the color Perfect Pearl. I'm also going to do um, a little bit of snow with some white acrylic paint. So I have a mini mister, which I have like just done one little squirt before and then that worked fairly well and it'll work fine for the acrylic paint, but for the um, Perfect Pearls, it has a tendency to like poof it all over my project. So what I usually do is just get a couple of drops of water with my paintbrush and I'm going to add water to one of the little um, drops of acrylic paint just so it's a little bit more translucent. And then I'm going to use the other one um, just as straight up acrylic paint. I'm not messing with the thickness and not watering it down at all. It's just straight white paint. And I, I guess I like doing a combination of the two because it gives a lot more dimension, especially if you're trying to do like a galaxy or a night sky. I'm going to set that aside to dry and then I'm going to stamp all my little characters. I'm going to be die cutting them. So I'm, I'm stamping them on Bristol paper still, but I want to give myself enough room to be able to die cut all of them. That's why they're kind of spread out there. And I am stamping in black Simon Says Stamp ink because it is waterproof. So stamping those down using that mini misty and then we're going to get right into the coloring. Here's where I noticed things started to go awry. So I've picked up some, what is this? Per permanent brown, transparent brown, I'll link it. Um, and I'm laying down just where I want the shadows to be. Now on regular watercolor paper, I can do this and then go back in with clean, clear water and blend it out and have no problems. 
that did not work out for this Bristol paper. Um, I just couldn't get rid of those harder lines. Uh, I'm not really sure. I don't know why it grabs so much. It just grabs that pigment and does not want to move it. So I think that this type of paper is, you can make it work because clearly I did. I mean, you saw the uh, end card. Um, it just took a lot more work on my part. And I'm not that confident in watercoloring to begin with. So anything that's like more work for me is just like, whoo, it's really frustrating. Um, but you you can make it work on the Bristol paper. Um, I The reason I own Bristol paper is actually because um, people had told me like for Zig Clean Color Markers that they really loved the results that they got with the Zig Clean Color Markers on Bristol paper. I use them on regular watercolors or watercolor paper and on Bristol paper and I didn't really notice that much of a difference. That's just me. Uh, but I definitely did with these uh, regular watercolor paints, these Daniel Smith watercolor paints. I definitely noticed that it wasn't really moving. So I let it dry. I went over with the first round and now I'm going back in to add some darker shading. And I have kind of found the the same thing. I kept trying to build up the color and blend it out and it just wasn't really happening for me. Um, I have a tendency to go in and do all of my shading at one time and then blend it, go back and blend it out because like I said with the, like I normally use Canson watercolor paper, um, I've never had any issues with that. But apparently with this one you need to like lay down the color and then blend it out immediately and I have to tell you even then it wasn't a guarantee. So this isn't something like where, oh, this product is bad or don't use it. Just maybe don't use it for this. Um, unless you like a look that has really um, hard shadows, which is beautiful. That is like a real look, a real technique that you can do with watercolors where you have harder shadows in your um, objects or in this case, our stamps. Um, then if you're going for that look, then this would be perfect for it. I wasn't, I was trying to get a smooth blend. So you might notice here that my color is changing a little bit. I felt like my bear was a little bit too red. Um, so I mixed the whatever that brown is that I can't remember the name of with some cridacridone gold. Why is that word so hard to say? Isn't it funny how some words are just like there are certain words you can't say. Like I can't say hippopotamus. Can't. I call it a hippo because I cannot say hippopotamus. Um, my mother cannot say idea. She says ideal. It's a good ideal. Um, my, <laughs> my dad, <laughs> my dad cannot say Arnold Schwarzenegger. He calls him Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Just adds a little bit, a little bit on the end there. Um, I don't, I don't know why there's just some words that are so <laughs> difficult <laughs> to pronounce, but, um, anyway, apparently mine is still I'm butchering it never even just never mind you know what I'm saying um so anyway I didn't like the color of the bear so I mixed some of the brown with a little bit of the gold and then um put that on top of kind of already the shading that I had going on and I liked that color much better so for the little bunny here um I'm using the Lunar Black. It's extremely watered down. Obviously, I want him to be a little white bunny and I'm just adding in the shadows. But again, the the blending made it very difficult. That little C shape that I put down for the shading on the back of his head on the left hand side, um, I just could never get it to go away. Could never get it to blend out. And, you know, I don't know. It, every card you make isn't going to be perfect. And do I still think it came out cute? Yeah, I do. Is it the favor my most favorite card that I've ever made in my entire career and I'm just going to frame it and hang it in, on my wall? Probably not. But that's okay because everything is a learning process. And so if I had never tried this, then I wouldn't know and then I wouldn't be able to share it with you. So you're welcome. Um, but so just kind of blending out that those grays, he still did look very, he looks pretty gray here, but when you when I put him on the background, he still did look very white. I wanted him to have a little bit of pink in his cheeks. So I um, put that down and then I just kind of blended it out with some clean, clear water. Same thing with his ears. He had, I forgot his little belly, but eventually I'll go back and do that as well. Uh, I added just a little bit more of the lunar black um, to just kind of blend that pink in. 
And then um, I'm gonna move on to, I just love these little, I mean, this whole set is just completely adorable. And I know it's called holiday baking, but I mean, really this card could be for, for any time of the year. I just love these little accoutrements that they have for the baking. I think that they are so adorable. Um, so this little milk carton, I shaded it a little bit darker on the left-hand side. Um, and then I originally shaded it with the ultramarine blue, which is the same color I used in the background, um, just to kind of tie those in together. I didn't end up keeping it though, so don't get married to it. Um, I'm going to go back in and add a little bit darker shading on the left-hand side so that it looks like it is the side of the container and everything isn't shaded the same exact color. And then I'm going to make that blue on the side a little bit darker as well. I'm going to do the same thing for the sugar container. I'm going to shade it white. Um, I don't know. My mom, I don't, when I was growing up, my mom had white canisters. I have white canisters. I don't, it's hard for me. And I see other people's kitchens and they'll have like red, um, like mixers and canisters and it's all super cute. And I don't know why I just, I'm drawn to the white. I mean, even my dishes, my, um, in my husband's family, it's kind of tradition for his parents to, um, buy their kids as their part of their wedding gift, uh, false grass dishes. And so my mother-in-law, when we were getting married, she was like, pick out the set that you want. And so I did, and they're, they're beautiful. I had a little bit of a hard time because some of the patterns were pretty busy and I'm pretty clean and simple. Um, but we ended up finding one and they're beautiful. We've been married for seven years. I have never even opened those dishes. I'm not kidding you because I have white, um, white, cups, plates, side plates, I, the whole deal. And that's what just what I use. Um, so anyway, I, I, I just, it didn't occur to me to color them anything else. When you're watercoloring, you don't want to work in two areas that are wet. And the reason why is what you just saw. Um, so two areas next to each other that are wet are going to be more likely to blend together. Um, if it's just a little bit damp, you might not get a lot of bleeding or you might not get any at all if you're really careful. I clearly did. I got a little bit of that brown for my batter into the teal for my bowl. And um, so I just blotted it up and let it dry and I'm going to go back and fix it later. The blending issues that I were having on this B Bristol paper were never so apparent as they were on this rolling pen. Now you can see I'm, I'm completely saturating it. That color is not moving. It's not moving at all. I was like, I feel like I'm watercoloring on a regular cardstock, which I wasn't, by the way. It's not like I got confused and picked up the wrong one. So I put down like just a sheen of clean, clear water, and then I'm dropping color in, in the hopes that I will be able to blend it out. I'm going to let it sit for a minute since it is a little bit um, more wet than the rest of everything I've been coloring. And while I was waiting, I did the little pink on the bear's ears. So now I'm going back in, it's much drier at this point, not completely dry, but it's definitely um, dried down a little bit. And I'm gonna add in some darker color and again, in the hopes that I can just blend out that really, really blunt line. I'm going to use the same colors um, for the wooden spoons, cause I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, my mama had wooden spoons. So originally I started shading the one that the bunny will be holding um on the left hand side and then it occurred to me that the way that it's going to be positioned on the card was the right hand side would actually be down so I did go back and shade that a little bit darker this is where I decided I was just going to make them all teal because there wasn't a lot of color in this card anyway so I added the um a little bit of the teal to the sugar bowl just the top and the um like the banner around the lid. And then I will eventually go back in and add that to the milk as well, just so everything's a little matchy matchy. I used basically multiple variations of the same brown for my bear, my batter, my rolling pin, my wooden spoons. Um, all of them are just different mixes of the same, either brown with the gold, more brown, less gold, more gold, less brown. You get what I'm saying. Um, so then that was pretty much it, pretty much all of the coloring. So once they everything was dry and you want to make sure everything's dry because you're going to have to hold these dyes in place with something and you don't want to rip your paper down if you spend all that time coloring it. So I'm putting these dyes in place. I'm going to run it through my Big Shot. I also ran that tag dye through my Big Shot. And along in that classic dye set, they have the, um, oh, I should have looked it up. 
I didn't look it up. What is that called? The little hole that, is it a re, is it a reinforcer? What is that thing? Anyway, I cut it out of black paper. That's what I did. And I'm gluing that down with some Tombow when I multi-glue. And then I have some black and white Baker's twine. The way that I prefer to do my twine is I match up the ends so it creates a loop on the bottom. I feed the two ends through and then loop them through the, um, the loop on the bottom of the string. Um, for my sentiment, I actually cut one of the long tags that is in that same uh, classic die or classic tag too, and I just trimmed off the edge that has the um, the hole for the tag, and I used that to stamp my sentiment on. I'm gonna pop my tag up with some uh, white fun foam, so I just cut that, and made sure that I cut around the whole area so that you would still be able to see through that, and this is gonna help. Um, just make sure that it lays flat. The The die cutting helps too because you're rolling it through um, the, your big shot or, you know, cuddle bug or whatever you got going on. And that'll help flatten it out. And then this will help even more. So I'm gluing that down using that white fun foam. And then I just laid the banner uh, there. It's not adhered just so I could see where I wanted to put my, um, my cute little bear and bunny. So this, I glued the bear down flat. I'm going to glue the bunny down flat, him and his spoon. And then even though it's like dimension on dimension, I just felt like the banner should be popped up. I didn't like the way that it looked flat. So I'm going to put these um, down here, like I said, just adhering them flat. And then I'm going to adhere that baked with love with some scotch foam tape. I'm going to gather the other little items kind of around the sentiment. So I put the rolling pin down and then um, I'm gonna do the milk and the sugar. For the rolling pin, I'm actually going to end up trimming off a very small piece of scotch foam tape to put underneath it where it's not on the banner. And then I ended up doing the same thing for the milk and the sugar containers, just so everything was flush and I didn't have to worry about them like getting crushed if I chose to mail it, which I'm not gonna mail it. You know that because I don't mail anything because I am a procrastinator, hence why I'm making Santa's cookies tonight. So anyway, that's the entire card. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you have a wonderful Christmas and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.